Today, uh, we're going to tackle blockchain. It's a term you've definitely heard, maybe even dismissed as just, you know, tech hype. Yeah, it's been buzzing around for a while now. But looking at what we've gathered from Mornet Global Academy, this seems like much more than a trend. It feels like a fundamental shift in, well, how we handle money, trading, finance, data even. Absolutely. I think it's really moved past that buzzword phase. Understanding blockchain, it isn't just for the tech folks anymore, right? If mm. you're in finance or honestly, even if you're just curious about where transactions are headed, getting a grip on the basics is uh, becoming pretty essential. Exactly. So our mission here, drawing on Mornick Global Academy's insights, is to cut through the noise. You yeah. Know, get to the core of it. Pull out what really matters about mm -hmm. blockchain and finance and trading. Make it clear, make it relevant, and maybe, hopefully, trigger a few aha moments. Sounds like a plan. Okay, so let's unpack this. At its most basic level, mm -hmm. what is blockchain? Okay, so uh, think of it like a shared digital record book, like a ledger. But instead of being stored in one single central place... Like a bank server. Exactly. Instead of that, it's copied and spread across uh, potentially thousands of computers in a network. Okay. Distributed. Right. And every computer on this network has a copy. So when a new transaction happens, say someone sends money, mm -hmm. the network has to collectively check it and agree it's valid before it gets added to everyone's copy of the ledger. Mornet Global Academy uses that analogy of a chain, right? A digital chain of blocks. <laughs> yeah, that's a good way to picture it. Each block is like a page in the ledger holding a batch of recent transactions. And once that block, that page, yeah. is filled and verified by the network. It gets added to the chain and it's cryptographically linked to the block right before it. Yeah. it creates this permanent chronological chain. And it's that linking plus the fact that it's spread out everywhere. Yeah. And that's where the security comes from. Precisely. That's the key. And uh, this is where it really breaks from traditional finance. You know, banks, clearing houses, they act as central authorities. They keep the records. They validate everything. The intermediaries. Yes. Blockchain works peer to peer. It cuts many of them out. And this decentralization, as Mornet Global Academy really emphasizes, it builds trust right into the technology itself. So less reliance on one single institution. Exactly. It sort of democratizes trust. Think of it like instead of one library holding the only copy of all the important books, everyone has a copy and they all have to agree before a new sentence is added to any book. Tamper proof, basically. OK, that makes sense. So the shift away from central control, mm -hmm. how is that actually you know, playing out in the real financial markets. It's not just theory anymore. Oh, far from it. It's actively changing the underlying plumbing of finance. Mornet Global Academy points to several big areas. Like what? Well, take cross-border payments. You know how sending money internationally can be slow. Ugh, yes. And expensive. Right. Lots of intermediary banks, currency conversions, waiting days. Blockchain can potentially allow for much faster settlement, sometimes almost real time. Why? Wow, okay. And that drastically cuts down delays and often those hefty fees too. I mean, yeah. think about it. Waiting days for international transfers could actually become a thing of the past. That alone is huge. A really fundamental change in how fast money can move around the world. It really is. And I remember reading about clearing and settlement too. Those like back office processes after you make a trade, they always seemed kind of old fashioned. They often are. Post-trade can involve a lot of manual checking, mm -hmm. reconciliation, which means potential for errors, delays. Mm -hmm. Blockchain can automate a lot of that using things called smart contracts, which we can get into. Basically making it more efficient, more accurate. Okay, smart contracts. Yeah. But what about digital identity? That seems crucial today. Definitely. With so much happening online, verifying who someone is securely is a massive challenge. Blockchain offers a framework for managing digital identities that can be more secure and transparent than, you know, traditional methods. Less risk of data breaches, maybe? Yeah, that sounds incredibly valuable. And it's not just talk. Warnet Global Academy notes that big players think J.P. Morgan, Goldman Sachs, yeah. even central banks, they're actively experimenting or already using blockchain solutions. Really? Central banks, too? Yep. They see the potential for efficiency, reliability. That tells you it's being taken very seriously at the highest levels. It really does. Okay, let's zoom in a bit now, specifically on trading. How's blockchain impacting the world of trading itself? Uh, the impact there is pretty profound, too. Mornet Global Academy outlines a few key things. First up is tokenization. Tokenization, okay. It's basically the process of taking a real-world asset. could be stocks, bonds, real estate, maybe even art. Like a painting? 
Potentially, yeah. Yeah. And representing ownership of that asset as a digital token on a blockchain. So instead of a paper deed or share certificate, you have a digital token. Exactly. And this makes these assets potentially easier to divide into smaller pieces and trade. Ah, so like I might not be able to afford a whole apartment building, but I could buy a token representing a tiny fraction of it. That's the idea. It could lower the barrier to entry for certain investments, unlock liquidity in assets that are traditionally hard to sell quickly. That really could open things up for smaller investors. What else? Then you have decentralized exchanges or DX. DXs, heard of those. These are trading platforms that run directly on the blockchain, peer-to-peer -peer trading, no traditional broker or central exchange in the middle. So I trade directly with another person facilitated by the blockchain code. Pretty much, yeah. It gives traders more direct control, potentially lower fees in some cases. That sounds like a pretty big shift. In trading, they're like self-executing agreements. The terms of a trade, buy this if the price hits X, are coded directly onto the blockchain. Okay. When the conditions are met, boom, the contract automatically executes the trade. No need for manual intervention. Like an automated escrow. If the condition is met, the exchange happens automatically. No one can back out. Exactly. It's all built into the code, transparent on the blockchain. This brings, as Mornet Global Academy highlights, potential benefits like faster transactions, enhanced security, especially for retail investors trading globally. Okay, so let's pull back for a second. Mm -hmm. If we summarize the core advantages blockchain brings, both the trading and finance generally, what are the headlines? Right. So number one is definitely speed and efficiency. Mm -hmm. Near instant settlements, cutting out delays. That's huge. Okay. Speed. Got it. Then security. Mm -hmm. That cryptographic linking makes the records incredibly hard to tamper with or change retroactively. Paper proof. Yeah. Cost reduction is another big one. Fewer intermediaries means, well, fewer fees usually. Good. And transparency. Because in most public blockchains, at least, the transaction history is visible to participants. It's immutable, can't be secretly altered. That builds on that trust point you made earlier, doesn't it? It really does. The trust isn't just in an institution anymore. It's kind of baked into the system's design. Mornet Global Academy uses a great phrase. Trust is built into the system, which is a massive leap from traditional opaque financial practices. That's a powerful idea, a massive leap. It is, but you know, it's important we keep a balanced view here. It's not all smooth sailing. There are definitely challenges and things to consider with blockchain adoption. Of course, no major tech shift is easy. What are some of the main hurdles right now? Well, regulation is a big one. Blockchain is global decentralized, but financial regulations are usually national, right? Right. Very country specific. So figuring out how this new tech fits into existing rules or what new rules are needed across all these different countries, it's complex. It creates uncertainty. I can see that. Yeah. Navigating that patchwork must be tough. Yeah. What else? Scalability can be an issue. Some blockchains, especially older ones, um, can struggle to handle a massive volume of transactions really quickly. Like, think visa-level transaction speeds. Oh, okay. So they can get congested? Sometimes, yeah. Which can lead to slower confirmation times or higher transaction fees during busy periods. It's something developers are actively working on. Lots of innovation happening there. So growing pains, essentially. Kind of. And then there's volatility and adoption. Particularly with cryptocurrencies, the price swings can be pretty wild, you know? Mm -hmm. And that speculation can make more conservative institutions or even just average people a bit hesitant to jump in. It potentially slows down wider acceptance. Yeah, the crypto bro image doesn't always help with mainstream trust, I suppose. Perhaps not. But it's interesting, Mornet Global Academy specifically mentions they aim to help navigate these hurdles, providing education, guidance, stable tools. So they see these challenges as solvable, not roadblocks. It seems that way, yes, which is encouraging. And looking forward, the future potential seems, well, pretty enormous, especially when blockchain starts merging with other tech. Like what kind of tech? Mornet Global Academy points to things like artificial intelligence, IoT, the Internet of Things, you know, connected devices and big data analytics. OK, how would they work together? Well, imagine combining the secure, transparent record keeping of blockchain with AI's ability to analyze vast amounts of data or IoT devices securely reporting data onto a chain. It could unlock uh, huge efficiencies and new possibilities in finance automated compliance, smarter risk assessment, things like that. 
Wow, yeah, the synergy there sounds powerful. And governments are getting more involved, too. You mentioned central banks earlier. Right. The whole area of central bank digital currency CBDCs is heating up. Many countries are researching or even piloting digital versions of their national currency, potentially built on blockchain-inspired tech. But governments themselves are exploring this. That's significant. Very. And then there's the whole DeFi movement, decentralized finance. DeFi, yeah. Trying to rebuild finance without the banks. Essentially, yes. Building financial services, lending, borrowing, trading directly on blockchain, open to anyone. It's still evolving, has its risks, but the ambition is huge. It really feels like we're watching a major reshaping of the financial world unfold. And Mornet Global Academy also touches on smart investment platforms using blockchain to automate portfolio management, optimize strategies, potentially making sophisticated investing more accessible. So it seems more net global isn't just talking about this stuff. They're actively building with it. Exactly. They're not just observers. They mention providing tools for Forex and crypto traders that are already integrated with blockchain tech. So practical applications for their users right now. Seems so. And they're apparently developing their own native token, too which usually signals a plan to build out a whole ecosystem on the blockchain within their platform, offering, you know, new features or benefits. Interesting. And using blockchain for analytics and tracking assets on their platform? Yeah, it shows they're trying to leverage the core strengths of the tech transparency, security for tangible user benefits, and they emphasize making it understandable, accessible, even if you're not a blockchain expert. Which is key, right? Bringing complex tech to a wider audience. Absolutely. And it seems like their focus is bridging that gap between the, uh, the technical weeds of blockchain and what traders actually need day to day. Okay, so wrapping this up, our deep dive, guided by Mornet Global Academy's perspective. The big picture seems to be that blockchain isn't some far-off future thing. It's here, now, actively changing finance and trading. Yeah, I think that's fair to say. Offering real pluses in security, transparency, speed. It feels like getting your head around this, understanding its potential, is becoming pretty crucial if you want to stay ahead in finance. That sums it up well. It's a fundamental shift, no doubt. And understanding the why and how behind it will likely give people an edge as things continue to evolve. So as we finish up this deep dive on blockchain and trading and finance, really leaning on those insights from Mornet Global Academy, the core message feels pretty clear. This tech is driving a major transformation. Definitely. Bringing those benefits we talked about. Better security, more transparency, that game-changing speed and efficiency. Right. And maybe a final thought for everyone listening. Consider this increasing tokenization of everything. How might that really change what we invest in and how we invest down the road? Hmm. Yeah. What new doors does DeFi really open up, not just for big institutions, but for individuals? What are the ripple effects, you know, societally as finance potentially becomes more decentralized and accessible? Lots to think about there. Definitely food for thought. It's a space that's moving incredibly fast. Worth keeping an eye on. Absolutely. So if today sparked your interest, definitely keep exploring blockchain and its impact. It's constantly changing. Thanks for joining us for this deep dive. Music